Now, I was thinking the old wedge get 12 volts from USB-C, hacking them together to make something that does the same job. And I still have to be nearer accelerated Amiga 500 plus, half the price of... Hello. Well, as you know, or maybe you don't, I've got several Amigas. A majority are the, the old wedge, and the power supplies for those are a little bit dubious at best. Now I did, create an ATX based power supply using an adapter to plug into the Amiga. Now that worked perfectly, but I do need another power supply because I want one on the bench and one that I can use elsewhere. So this journey is really to find a better solution and one that's maybe a little bit on the smaller side. So looking at the actual specs for the Amiga, the actual power supplies themselves come out around about 22 to 25 ish watts. But the Amiga itself, in most configurations, doesn't pull anywhere near that. But using this very small power supply, which is designed to power just LED lights, the amperage at 12 volts gives you something around about 17 watts, which should be perfectly adequate to power the average Amiga 500. So the first part of this, we're going to take this tiny little power supply and connect that to a Pico ATX. We're going to remove the ATX connector from this and just wire it directly. That should give me a pretty compact solution that I can put inside an original Amiga power supply case with no problems. So what I've actually done here is desolder the entirety of that ATX connector and I've added little pin headers. I've done those in twos just for stability, even when I only want to use one of the pins. And that's based on the standard ATX pinout and I need to pull out 12 volts, 5 volts and minus 12 volts in order to power the Amiga. Those are the same voltages that I identified in the previous video. We're just shortening the adapter to just going directly to the ATX board. And it's important to remember when playing with mains voltages, don't do it. If you don't know what you're doing, don't touch the mains. It hurts. I speak from experience, and that's another story. So thinking about this, yes, this works. I can get it inside the case, but it's still the same size as an original Amiga power supply and I still have to be near a standard 240 volt outlet because I'm in the UK and that's what the mains power is. What if I actually wanted to take this elsewhere or travel with it? Because I'm about to build an Amiga 600 in a coming video. And it'd be nice if I had a way of powering that without needing to plug it into the wall. Now you can buy these little adapters that allow you to get 12 volts from USB-C. Connecting that to the Pico ATX could well be quite a compact solution. So that is my next endeavor. Sponsors of this video are PCBWay. They provide PCB prototype fabrication from as little as $5. They also have a huge library of shared projects, and if you're not confident with a soldering iron, you can get them to assemble them for you. PCBWay also have CNC machining and 3D printing services. All of this is available at PCBWay.com. Thanks PCBWay for sponsoring this video.
So first off, let's see if we can actually get this to power my Bench Ziff Amiga 500. Work in progress, by the way. I want all of that in here. So to make this fit inside this small black box, we're going to need to cut something out for the cable relief. We're also going to need to cut out the switch and for the USB-C connector. And we can put the cable out in pretty much the center of the back of the box. Arranging it in the box, it looks like the USB-C would be best presented at this point. In fact, in hindsight, soldering these directly to the PCB might have been a better choice, as it would have made it a damn sight easier to get inside this little box. But we got there in the end. I've used a bit of foam, um, which isn't necessarily the best thing to insulate a power supply when it's generating heat. But this is just to stop it floating about inside the box. It's not really insulating it any more than the plastic box is. And this shouldn't really get particularly hot, considering it's only running an Amiga, which is only going to be pulling somewhere between maybe 10 and 20 watts at the absolute max. It powers my Amiga no problem, but it'll even power my bigger accelerated Amiga 500 Plus. So there we have it, an Amiga 500 power supply. This would power a 600 or 1200 without any problem inside a tiny little box powered by USB-C that I could take on holiday. In fact, I could probably even use my Amiga on the plane. Now that would be an interesting video and potentially something my wife would consider divorcing me for. 
Basically, it's running on USB. Yes, there are devices out there that will do this directly, particularly the Amiga PowerShark, which is a solution that is literally this, USB-C directly into the Amiga. And that's quite a compact device. Now, this doesn't replicate that project. All I'm doing is taking things that you can buy off the shelf, pretty much, hacking them together to make something that does the same job. The other thing about the PowerShark is that they are about 65 euros, and I don't think this is necessarily any cheaper, but if you already have an Amiga 500 power supply, you can reuse the switch and the cable in this scenario, meaning you only have to buy the box, the Pico ATX card, and the little adapter for USB-C that allows you to generate the 12 volts needed. All in all, I would say if you've got an existing power supply, this is going to be half the price of buying a PowerShark outright. The other problem with the PowerShark is that currently they're not available. We're still waiting on the second run of my channel. So if you're interested in the PowerShark, I'd recommend watching Rob Smith's video. He goes into depth and detail of how that device works and a bit of the background into USB-C and the voltages that it can provide. He does have pretty good stress test on the device and it comes up basically solving all the problems you'd ever want. It manages under and over voltage very well, shuts down, protects the media in all cases. 